This is Matador News, and these are today's headlines. President Obama holds a news conference today after meeting with Italy's Prime Minister and says Donald Trump is whining. Iraqi forces face challenges against ISIS in the battle for Mosul. And NBC's anchor Billy Bush gets fired over the release of the Access Hollywood tape. Hello and welcome to Matador News. I'm Mabelin Capelo. And I'm Scott Sanders. The judge in the case involving Joaquin El Chapo Guzman was gunned down outside his home Monday. He was shot in the head while jogging outside his home in Metepec, Mexico. Mexican President Enrique Peña Nieto says there will be a complete investigation to the murder. President Obama is meeting with Italian Prime Minister Matteo Renzi. Renzi and his wife received the red carpet treatment today at the White House. The two leaders then held a news conference where they discussed different topics and answered questions. The president has some words for Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump, who has, predict, who has been predicting a rigged election. Or things are going badly for you and, and you lose, you start blaming somebody else. Then you don't have what it takes to be in this job. Uh, I'd advise Mr. Trump to stop whining and go try to make his case to get votes. Tonight at the White House, a state dinner featuring Italian food and a performance by Gwen Stefani. Let's head over to the newsroom to Matador News reporter Ushma Amin with students' reactions regarding Donald Trump's rigged election comments. Donald Trump has been making claims of election rigging ever since his poll numbers have dropped. His campaign has accused illegal immigrants of voting. Trump also claims the allegations of sexual assault made against him on media election rigging. It looks to me like a rigged election. It's a phony deal. We asked CSUN students their opinions on this topic. Basically, Donald Trump is, I believe, is a manipulative person. He's over here saying that he thinks the elections are rigged when I'm pretty sure that he's maybe previously in other events or elections or, I don't know, somewhat in the past, is known for probably rigging other elements just to get what he wants. Poor sportsmanship. Because, like, at the end of the day, you know, like, he's a really awful candidate. And if you notice, like, at his rallies, it's just those people. It, honestly, I feel like it's just those people who show up that are voting for him. I think it's a little bit ridiculous. Um, I think he's just trying to find uh, a scapegoat, like, a reason for why people, like, aren't voting for him anymore. But honestly, he's messed up so many times. I think people are just, just like, realizing that they don't want somebody like Trump to be president. Election is three weeks from today on November 8th. Students can register to vote until October 24th. Now back to the studio with more news. The third presidential debate will take place at University of Nevada, Las Vegas at 6 tomorrow evening. Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton may field questions regarding the resignation of Undersecretary of Management Patrick Kennedy. Kennedy resigned after his repeated attempts to sway the FBI's investigation into Clinton's email server recently leaked. Both candidates are spending millions of dollars on campaign ads in the final weeks of the presidential election. Clinton's husband and daughter, Bill, in Chelsea held a fundraiser on Monday. Dozens of Broadway legends and comedians were in attendance. In Iraq, the long-awaited offensive has started, but it could take two months to recapture Mosul from ISIS. It might take two weeks for advancing forces to enter the city. Operation consists of 94,000 members of Iraqi security forces. Kurdish, Peshmerga, allies, and thousands of irregulars from various minorities, White House, White House spokesperson Josh Ernest says morale is high amongst troops. Our, our campaign against ISIL in Iraq. The United States has mobilized a 67-member coalition to support the Iraqi government and Iraqi security forces as they seek to rid ISIL from their country. Peshmerga Brigadier General Sirwan Barzani says weather is one of the factors that could delay the two-month operation longer. Residents of Mogul, of Mosul, are in danger from snipers, landmines, hunger, and thirst as they leave the city. The United Nations' top humanitarian relief official is concerned because they don't have enough funds to prepare for a worst-case scenario. They may leave one million people displaced. Russia and Syria stopped their airstrikes on Aleppo, allowing civilians to evacuate. Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu says the humanitarian pause began at 10 this morning. The United Nations says Russia plans to hold fire over consecutive days this week. Moscow announced Monday that the humanitarian pause allows civilians to safely exit Aleppo. 
Aleppo, Syria's largest city, has been subjected to aerial attacks since 2011. Foreign ministers from Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and Qatar say they are working to moderate opposition groups from Syria's former al-Qaeda affiliate News Refront to try to end the fighting. The Syrian and Russian air raids have killed hundreds of civilians in Aleppo and caused thousands to flee. Russia is accusing the UK of violating freedom of press and speech. This comes after British bank NatWest closed accounts belonging to TV Russian network Russia Today. The network's editor-in-chief, Margarita Simonian, says she received a letter from NatWest saying it would close their accounts. Britain's Treasury says they had nothing to do with NatWest's decision. The decision was made independently and without consultation. NatWest has a history of closing accounts from Russia, from Russian customers, often without warning. Millions of Social Security recipients will receive a monthly increase next year. The federal government announced a 0.3% benefit increase Tuesday. There wasn't an increase in the cost of living adjustment COLA this year. COLA affects over 70 million Americans. The monthly average Social Security payment is around $1,200. Since inflation and fuel prices are low, the benefit hike is small, with only less than a $4 monthly increase. Unfortunately, the cost of medical care is rising, which gets deducted from Social Security payments. The Los Angeles Department of Water and Power restores power to 27,000 customers <coughs> after a rainstorm Sunday night. LADWP crews were working to restore power on Monday. Venice had the biggest power outage with nearly 8,000 people without electricity. The power outage affected people in Hollywood area and the San Fernando Valley. The Department of Water and Power says tree branches and debris making contact with power lines usually causes outages. Two slain Palm Springs police officers are being remembered today. Officers Leslie Zarebny and Jose Vega lost their lives in the line of duty earlier this month. They were gunned down after responding to a family disturbance call in Palm Springs. Governor Brown, State Attorney General Kamala Harris, and law enforcement officials from around the country are expected to attend. Let's go back to Samantha with the latest in entertainment. Thank you, Maybelline. After 12 years as an anchor on the NBC Entertainment News Show, Access Hollywood, and the Today Show, Billy Bush's reign has come to an end. Bush has been fired from the Today Show for his role in Donald Trump's lewd talk about women in 2005 from a leaked videotape. Trump was recorded talking in obscene terms about women groping them with their genitals, trying to pressure Bush's married co-host into sexual relationships, and claiming he could get away with anything because he was a star. In a CNN interview with Melania Trump, she says Bush egged on her husband in a tape to say dirty and bad stuff, a report that a $10 million settlement has been reached, but that report is false. NBC will pay some of the rest of Bush's three-year, $3 million contract. Bush released a statement saying he is ashamed and embarrassed, blaming his youth and immaturity at the time. He says he looks forward to what lies ahead. Melania Trump responds to the video of her husband from 2005. She says she was shocked by the video but believes her husband. I said to my husband that, you know, the language is inappropriate. It's not acceptable. And um, I was surprised because that is not the man that I know. She says she was egged on by Access Hollywood host Bush. Melania Trump criticized the looks of the women who have accused her husband of assault. The harassment, she says that they were not attractive enough to sexually assault. Melania says she agrees with Michelle Obama that kissing or groping a woman without consent is sexual assault. But to accuse someone without evidence, she says, is damaging and unfair. Now let's go to Amber Petita with the updates on health. Conjoined twins Anais and Jaden McDonald are resting in stable condition after going through a surgery that lasted 27 hours. The surgery took place at the Children's Hospital in New York City. The twins still have a long recovery ahead as they must undergo reconstruction surgeries in the weeks to come. The family set up a GoFundMe page that has reached $250,000. They are asking for those who wish to help to instead donate toward a family's friend's child who needs a kidney transplant. Dermatologists have found a new pill that could potentially restore hair. A study that was done by Stanford and Yale included 65 people with the autoimmune disease called Appalachia areata. This disease can make people completely bald. The pill called 
is known for treating people with the type of arthritis. Dermatologists found that by using an ointment containing cell jams helps those who suffer from the disease. Now let's go back to Samantha with the latest in business. CNN Money has obtained a letter warning the Wells Fargo CEO of fraud in 2007. Former CEO John Stumpf swore under oath that he was not notified of the fraudulent actions until 2013. The letter addressed to Stump was written by an employee six years before. The letter seemed to predict the scandal the bank is dealing with today. It warned that the company would suffer reputational damage. The employee wrote to Stump that this is his final hope for reporting the fake accounts. But CNN has not been able to determine whether the letters were actually sent. Stump stepped down this month, walking away with $130 million in Wells Fargo shares and other payouts. For the first time in 75 years of history of the brand M&M, it's introducing a new flavor called M&M Caramel. Each bite-sized candy has a soft caramel center covered in milk chocolate and will have its own crunchy, colorful shell. The company is calling the Caramel Edition one of the biggest launches in the brand history. Being larger in size, the caramel-filled M&M were an expensive effort that took a few years to develop. Mars Reach Search and Development Team says caramel is the $2.2 billion flavor. It is the fastest growing segment in food right now. This new candy won't hit the market until May 2017. Now let's go to Amber with everything in sports. The Los Angeles Dodgers have brought the momentum from Chicago into the third game at the NLCS. Now let's go back to Matador News reporter Yesenia Vergara for more on the story. Dodger fans are excited about tonight's game against the Cubs. The Dodgers are 1-1 one one in the series. Star pitcher Clayton Kershaw will sit out until the sixth game, but tonight's Rich Hill will be pitching and Jake Arrieta for the Cubs. Dodgers fans, share their thoughts on tonight's game. Rich Hill has been scaring me, but I think that him on the mound tonight will do good. And then we have Julio tomorrow, two lefties in a row. I think we'll kill it. I'm really excited. I'm actually headed over there at 5 o'clock today, so go Dodgers, you know. First baseman Adrian Gonzalez stirred a little controversy this week when news of him refusing to stay in the Trump-owned hotel in Chicago broke. One season student says he admires Gonzalez for his views. I think it's great. Uh, Adrian Gonzalez has always been kind of an advocate for, for his people. He's from Mexico. Um, he actually, he's one of the ones who he started getting players with Hispanic last names to get the accent marks because they would leave them off. So he kind of put it on just to kind of show his, his pride for his culture, and I think that's great. Um, he stands with what he believes in, and that's, that's amazing. Tonight's game begins at 5 at the Dodger Stadium. Now back to Amber in the studio with more on sports. The Indians have a commanding lead over the Toronto Blue Jays in the American League Championship Series. The Blue Jays face elimination and are down 3-0. Blue Jays pitcher Aaron Sanchez will start. Toronto manager John Gibbons says the team needs to bring everything they have into this next game. We'll show up tomorrow. It's definitely a daunting task, but uh, it's been done before. Cleveland is looking to respond with their best pitcher, Corey Kubler, to sweep the Blue Jays. Kluber pitched in the game one victory over Toronto and threw for six innings. The ALCS Game 4 is today on TBS at Rogers Center in Toronto. The Los Angeles Sparks and the Minnesota Lynx are locked in for the final game of the WNBA Championship. Candace Parker and the Sparks had the opportunity to win at home in Game 4 on Sunday. Even Kobe Bryant attended the game in hopes of seeing Parker win her first championship. Yet the reigning champs were not going to let the game slip away that easy. Small forward Maya Moore from the Lynx took over in the second half, collecting a total of 31 points and 9 rebounds. Several turnovers and fouls committed by the Sparks also contributed to the Lynx 85-79 victory. The Sparks have not won a championship since 2002. Game 5 is set for Thursday at Target Center in Minnesota. Now let's go back to Maybelline Capullo for more news. A baby elephant in Thailand rescues a man in a river. Well, at least she thought she did. Derek Thompson is a co-founder of the Save Elephant Foundation. He was swimming in a, near, in a river nearby. The foundations rescued baby elephants. One of the elephants, Kam La, heard him call out for her. She, mis she mistook this for a distress call and rushed to save him. Ka La swam straight to Thompson, offered him her trunk, and shielded his body. 
According to CNN, Thompson is one of her favorite people. The video of the rescue has gone viral since it was posted. Thank you for watching Matador News. I'm Maybelline Kaplu. I'm Scott Sanders. I'm Amber Partida. And I'm Samantha Schenkel.